Lou Elizondo is on his way to interview a former U.S. Air Force officer willing to speak about his UFO sighting for the first time. The alleged sighting took place at an Air Force base with nuclear weapons and a long history of strange encounters. My name is Daniel Gibson. I'm a retired Air Force major. Major Gibson, thank you very much for taking your time to come and speak with us here today. I'd like to start by asking you, what inspired you to come here today and why now? In the fall of 1995, I was stationed at Malmstrom Air Force Base in Montana, right outside of Great Falls. Malmstrom is primarily a ICBM missile base. Since the 1960s, Malmstrom Air Force Base has housed hundreds of intercontinental ballistic missiles with nuclear warheads capable of destroying entire cities. During the Cold War, the base was a key part of America's nuclear arsenal that provided a protective arc across the nation's northern tier. Launch trajectories from the Soviet Union come over the poles across Alaska and Canada. A ring of bases were established across the northern United States to house both ICBMs and strategic bombers. And they were the bedrock of our strategic deterrence and our security and safety. In the fall of 1995, Gibson was on board a KC-135 as it conducted mid-air refueling for a fleet of B-1B strategic heavy bombers, which can carry nuclear payloads anywhere in the world. Once the refueling was done, we started our trip back to Malmstrom. I moved forward to the flight deck to enjoy the aurora borealis above us. Flight paths for these refueling missions often included views of the aurora borealis, or northern lights. All of a sudden, there was just this very bright light. The aircraft commander and the co-pilot, they saw it first. Time kind of froze for us, but it was probably a, a good minute that it was there. This light, we watched it all the way down into the aurora where it stopped. And you could actually see the aurora flowing around it, just as if you would see a, a bow wave going around the front of a boat. The longer the object stayed in the aurora, the brighter the object got. And then it just shot straight up and was gone. So some people would say, you're obviously confused. You saw a planet or a star. We had no doubt in our mind that it was not a star or a planet because it entered our atmosphere. It was in the Aurora Borealis itself, and then it shot straight back up. I've seen the International Space Station. It moves at a very fast clip. This was moving 10 times plus. We all had the same reaction. It was almost a, a stunned silence. None of us had seen anything like that before. Some folks will say, well, you know, it could be a Russian uh, first stage booster rocket coming in on re-entry. Well, initially, we thought it was a shooting star, but then we saw the speed at which it was descending, and then it stopped. According to Gibson's account, the object possessed three of the five observables. Instantaneous acceleration, the ability to accelerate instantly from a standstill, hypersonic velocity, speeds of 3,700 miles per hour or more, and transmedium travel, the ability to move through air, water, and the vacuum of space. You're going from an atmospheric environment to potentially a vacuum environment. I don't know of any object in our inventory that has the capability to stop mid-re-entry, stay in position, and then once it's done, accelerate back out of the atmosphere. The G-forces would kill a human being. To Elizondo, Major Gibson's sighting is part of a pattern. While working with ATIP, the Pentagon's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, Elizondo says investigators researched multiple UFO sightings around northern tier nuclear bases during the Cold War. These sightings were part of a recently leaked 500-page government-funded report detailing dozens of alleged Cold War UFO encounters. Investigative journalist Tim McMillan 
has studied the report. There's a chart that showed the number of UFO sightings within proximity to different nuclear facilities that house weapon systems. There's a distinct correlation that, that these objects appear to be encroaching upon airspace of the northern tier. If you look at just those numbers alone, it's, it's alarming. One of the most remarkable Cold War era sightings also occurred near Malmstrom Air Force Base, 28 years before Gibson's experience. In 1967, several Air Force personnel reported seeing a glowing red object flying over the base. The object appeared to move rapidly and was able to make sharp 90-degree turns, stop abruptly, and reverse course, much like the movements described by Major Gibson nearly 30 years later. Both the UFOs had this incredible ability to take off and basically go from, from a, 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 a very low velocity, almost a complete hover, to an incredible speed in the instant of time. And there is one more detail that concerns Elizondo and his team. Reportedly, moments after the sighting, 10 of Malmstrom's nuclear warheads were suddenly, inexplicably turned off. These weapon systems had been shut offline, so they couldn't be fired. If these were Russian aircraft, if these were someone else's aircraft, the idea that something could possess a technology that could fly within proximity and take these systems offline, that's a terrifying capability. Is this some sort of US secret technology or perhaps some sort of adversarial secret you know, weapon system or platform. There is a definitive link to nuclear technology, whether on the battle space or in time of peace. That, I think, is becoming more and more clear. The question is, why? What is the connection? 